now it's time for the only show that doesn't care about ratings, Witness Radio, with your host, Ryan Muniak. Welcome to the only show that doesn't care about ratings, because our sole purpose is to save souls, on purpose. Go to witnesstalkradio.org for more episodes and call 513-900-8070 to give feedback. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Thanksgiving is a special night. Jimmy Walker used to say dynamite. That's right. Tomorrow is the national holiday known as Thanksgiving. People come together with loved ones to stuff their faces, watch football, and make plans for getting through the crowds during Black Friday. But Thanksgiving hasn't always been about those things. To most Americans, the Pilgrims of Plymouth, Massachusetts are the iconic inspiration for today's Thanksgiving feast. After the winter of 1620 killed almost half of their people, the colonists formed a relationship with the neighboring Wampanoag tribe who taught them about fishing, planting, and hunting. By autumn of 1621, the colonists had collected enough food to feed the community through the coming winter. The Wampanoags joined the colonists for a three-day feast in honor of their bounty. The feast probably did not include our modern Thanksgiving staple, turkey. More likely, the colonists and Wampanoags dined on roast goose, along with corn, codfish, and lobster. This 1621 harvest meal is now commonly thought of as the first Thanksgiving. Yet for later generations of colonists, New England days of Thanksgiving had little to do with the 1621 harvest festival. Theirs was a religious holiday, descended from Puritan days of fasting, prayer, and giving thanks to God. Every autumn, the governor of each colony would declare days of Thanksgiving for bountiful harvests, victorious battles, or drought-ending rains. In 1777, the Continental Congress decreed that all 13 of America's colonies celebrate a national day of Thanksgiving that year in celebration of their victory over the British at Saratoga. By the mid-19th century, many states celebrated the holiday. However, the date could vary by weeks or even months. A determined magazine editor named Sarah Josepha Hale set about establishing a national Thanksgiving Day. She passionately believed that such a day would help unite a nation headed towards civil war. Hale began a one-woman letter-writing campaign, urging politicians to establish an annual day of Thanksgiving. Her efforts were finally rewarded by Abraham Lincoln, who saw the unifying potential of the holiday. In 1863, Four months after the victory at Gettysburg, he declared the last Thursday of November to be Thanksgiving Day. By the 20th century, Thanksgiving was a welcome day of leisure from a six-day work week. In the 1920s, the National Football League was formed. In an effort to boost attendance, the fledgling Detroit Lions devised the concept of a Thanksgiving Day game. Parades also became a Turkey Day tradition, and department stores quickly saw their value as a kickoff to the Christmas shopping season. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade began in 1924, and year after year, millions of New Yorkers braved the cold to watch the festivities. Most of all, Thanksgiving is about family. With modern life moving faster than ever, Thanksgiving gives us a day to take a collective breath, reconnect with loved ones, and remember just how much we have to be thankful for. You're listening to Witness Radio. Originally, Thanksgiving was meant to be a time where people would give thanks to God for the various blessings in their lives. I'm thankful to God for saving me from hell, for saving me from the evil person that I used to be, and for saving me from his wrath. Sure, there are many things that I'm thankful for, but there's nothing as wonderful as the salvation of our Lord. Psalm 69.30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. Now, I'm not much of a singer, but I do magnify Christ by giving thanks to Him. What are you thankful for? 
Do you thank God for your blessings? Don't wait until tomorrow. Give Him the glory that He deserves today. Let me ask you this. Have you ever told a lie before? Uh, on, on stage? No. Well, just, just in general? In life in general? Oh yeah, I lie all the time. Okay. Uh, have you ever stolen before? Not really, no. Not much of a thief. Okay. It, you said not really. Does that mean you did it at one point in time? I mean, I think it's all subjective, right? Saying what what is one man's and another's, I don't know if that's really you can say that. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't really stolen anything. But maybe somebody lends me a pencil, I take it, I forget to give it back. You know, it's stuff like that. Okay. So uh, you've never illegally downloaded movies or music or anything like that? Well, I don't think that's stealing because that's art. I think art's on the mainframe. You can, uh, art is out there for the populace. It's not, you can't just hold on to art and try to make profit out of art. Okay, so say you become a popular comedian and you put together this awesome DVD of your, of your greatest bits and you go out and you start selling them, you know, to support your living as a comedian and then you find out that someone has leaked that DVD onto YouTube and everyone, no one's buying it anymore because they're all watching it for free on YouTube. Well, it's more important to me that my material gets out there and that people see it and people enjoy it than it is to make a profit. Okay. All right, I'll let you go with that one. One more for you. Uh, the Bible says uh, you should not commit adultery. Right. Uh, but Jesus took it a step further. He said that if you just look with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Oh, all the time, yeah. Okay. So, Muhammad, uh, what I've just done is I've taken you through a couple of the Ten Commandments, yeah. which I'm sure you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, and based on your own admission, you've admitted to being a liar and an adulterer at heart. So, here's the big question. If... God were to judge you based on the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? I guess by your logic, probably guilty. Okay. But not by your logic. I mean, if he's solely basing it on the Ten Commandments, I think so. But I think uh, I do a lot of good, and, you know, there's more good in my heart than there is evil, so I'll be all right. Okay. So, let me put a scenario to you. You're in court for a heinous crime and the judge has found you guilty and you say well judge yeah I know I did that bad thing but I've also done a lot of good things you, sh you should see all the good things and let me go free does that work in real world I mean let's think about it though like uh, Sometimes you can overlook what people do. You know, Gandhi was a terrible racist, but people overlook that because he did a lot of good for the world. So it depends on the, uh, the severity of the crime, and I think it really depends. You know? Okay. So you would be okay with the judge that lets people go based on their good deeds? Yeah. Okay. Well... I wouldn't be. I, I would want a judge that is just and, and good and punishes evil. And, you know, that's the well, God... I, well, I think you got to have these scales, right? So the scales of justice, there's good and then there's evil. So if it balances out, I think you're fine, you know? So you never really know if you are fine, if you've done good enough. I mean, I guess. I just keep a mindset to always do good. You know, if something's uh, slipped through the cracks... Uh, just try to do more good than you do harm and you'll be all right. Well, let's say just based on lies. This is going on the radio? Yep. Okay. So just based on lies, we'll say, for example, say you've told one lie every day for your life. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. Okay. So for 20 years, every day, at least once you've told a lie each day. That would be a whole lot of lies. Now, granted, we've got some variabilities because, you know, before you could talk, you couldn't tell lies and stuff like that. But essentially, it'd be a lot of lies, right? I mean, sure. Yeah, that'd be a lot of lies. But at the same time, every day, if you're doing two good things, you know, 
for one lie. I don't know. I don't think I lie every day. I don't think that's a thing I do. I think uh, this is all sort of conjecture. So I think um, maybe, uh, maybe what I'm asking is what's the point of all this, you know? Well, the point of all this is to share with you that we're not good. We're not good enough to get to heaven. We've all sinned. We've all broken God's laws. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Wasn't it John, uh, John 3.16? Uh, yeah. Uh, For God, God so did. loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Yes. Yeah. So that's the idea that Jesus died for our sins. So I feel like if we don't, well, if we don't sin a little, Jesus died for nothing. I think that's a thing. Okay. Well, the Bible also talks about that, says, should we sin more so that grace abounds more? God forbid. We shouldn't seek to do more sin so that we have more grace. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not particularly, I'm not really Christian. My name's Muhammad. I think you established well, that. I, I understand that. code of ethics, I think. I understand that, Muhammad. But listen to this. See, the Bible says you know that there is one God. Right. And that it's the there's only one God. He's the true God, and that there's. It says that if you are not following that one true God, you're following a false God. Okay. And the true God says that He will punish the wicked. It says in Revelation that He will put says that all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur. Oh, sorry, I got a. I got about three more minutes, if that's all right with you. Not a problem. I'll finish up right now, okay? Okay, thank you. So listen, you've sinned against a holy, righteous God. Yeah. He is not going to let your sin go unpunished. I, I believe he's a forgiving God at the same time. Oh. It says that at the same, it says that he's a forgiving God all, all at the same time. So I don't know. The Bible says a lot of things, and I think you can't, some of them don't always agree with each other in the same context, so you got to look at it in a different context. Sure, you can believe that this God is vengeful and he's not forgiving, but I think he is forgiving. I think he's given us a lot, and I think, you know, ultimately, it's his judgment, and um, he'll make the right judgment. But I also think he sees through our eyes, and he can put himself in our perspectives. Okay. Well, listen, he is a forgiving God, but he is also a righteous God, and a God that will punish sin. You see, going back to that courtroom scenario, you're guilty. The judge cannot let you go free unless a fine is paid or the punishment is paid. I'll pay the punishment, then. Okay. Well, that, that's your choice. Right. But th there's another option. There's a way out of that, and that's through Jesus Christ, God's Son, who died on the cross to pay for the sins of mankind and rose on the third day. He offers you eternal life. He offers you forgiveness of your sin if you repent, which means to turn away from sin, and put your trust in him and him alone. Uh, sure thing. Yeah, that's a way to look at it. Yep. What do Jewish people believe? Or Muslims, a Mormon, or a Jehovah's Witness? If you've ever wondered, then the book, What Do They Believe, is for you. From the differing views on God and Jesus to sin, salvation, and eternity, what do they believe will help you get an accurate understanding of what other religions believe. What Do They Believe by Andrew Rappaport, available now on Kindle and at strivingforeternity.org. Christians agree that sharing the gospel is extremely important, but many never do because they fear not knowing what to say. The School of Biblical Evangelism by Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron is your complete guide to sharing your faith. It has 101 lessons exploring everything from world religions to biblical prophecies. Learn how to overcome your fears, answer the most common questions, and take part in the work of saving the lost. Get the School of Biblical Evangelism through our store at livingwaters.com and learn how to share the gospel simply, effectively, and biblically, the way Jesus did. Mm -hmm. 
Imagine Jesus walking onto your local college campus. What would he say? Would he be like Matthew chapter 9, seeing the people rast and helpless like sheep without a shepherd? And say, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. At Christian Collegiate Network, we are sending workers into the harvest. We are training students how to proclaim the glorious gospel, not only in the way that they live their lives, but how to speak to the campus community about the gospel. If you want to support our ministry at Christian Collegiate Network by becoming a campus leader or financially, go to changeyourcampus.com. Christian Collegiate Network, changeyourcampus.com. Ratings. We don't need no stupid ratings. You're listening to Witness Radio with Ryan Muriak. <coughs> but we like Ryan. <coughs> We do! Just go to witnesstalkradio.org. Gobble, gobble, goo, and gobble, gobble, giggle. I wish turkey only cost a nickel. Oh, I love turkey on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Welcome back to the show. While Thanksgiving is a nationally celebrated holiday, there are some that actually want to get rid of it. There are some who use it as a platform to talk about the suffering and cruelty towards Native Americans. Others think it's a mingling of church and state, so therefore it should no longer be celebrated. Don't let these objections stop you from giving praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 4 4-7. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, a day when families across the U.S. will gather for food, fellowship, and hopefully to thank God for His many provisions. Now, America has strong Christian roots, but many educational materials and institutions avoid mentioning this. For example, in 1621, after a deadly winter in the New World, Edward Winslow wrote praises to God for the good harvest they'd had. And although Thanksgiving was basically a harvest festival, Winslow clearly gave glory to God. President George Washington made this a national event in 1789. He also recognized the need to praise God for his blessings. As you celebrate tomorrow, think of America's Christian roots. Offer thanks to God. You know, every president of the United States has celebrated Thanksgiving, and they each offer a Thanksgiving proclamation. Here's just a sampling of some of their remarks. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committees requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favor, able interpositions of his providence in the course and conclusion of the late war, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted, for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general, for all the great and various favors with which he has been pleased to confer upon us. 
and also that we may unite in most humble offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all whether in public or private stations to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise just and constitutional laws discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations especially such as have shown kindness to us and to bless them with good governments peace and concord to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the increase of science among them and us and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best given under my hand at the city of New York the third day of October the year of our Lord 1789 George Washington good morning everyone you know, the Statue of Liberty and this wonderful holiday called Thanksgiving go together naturally because although as Americans we have many things for which to be thankful, none is more important than our liberty. Liberty, that quality of government, that brightness of mind and spirit for which the Pilgrim Fathers braved the seas and Americans through two centuries have laid down their lives. Today, while religion is suppressed in perhaps one-third of the world, we Americans are free to worship the Almighty as we choose. While entire nations must endure the yoke of tyranny, we are free to speak our minds, to enjoy an unfettered and vigorous press, and to make government abide by the limits we deem just. While millions live behind walls, we remain free to travel throughout the land, to share this precious day with those we love most deeply, the members of our families. My fellow Americans, let us keep this Thanksgiving Day sacred. Let us thank God for the bounty and goodness of our nation. And as a measure of our gratitude, let us rededicate ourselves to the preservation of this, the land of the free, and the home of the brave. From the Reagan family to your family, happy Thanksgiving and God bless you all. On behalf of the Obama family, Michelle, Malia, Sasha, Bo, and Sonny, I want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Like many of you, we'll spend the day with family and friends, catching up, eating some good food, and watching a little football. Before we lift a fork, we lend a hand by going out to the community to serve some of our neighbors in need. And we give thanks for each other and for all of God's blessings. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because more than any other, it is uniquely American. Each of us brings our own traditions and cultures and recipes to the table, but we all share this day united by the gratitude for the bounty of this nation. And we welcome the contributions of all people, no matter their origin or color or beliefs, who call America home and who enrich the life of our nation. It's a creed as old as our founding, e pluribus unum, that out of many, we are one. We're reminded that this creed and America itself was never an inevitability but the result of ordinary people in every generation doing their part to uphold our founding ideals by taking the blessings of freedom and multiplying them for those who would follow. As President Kennedy once wrote, even as we give thanks for all that we've inherited from those who came before us, the decency of purpose, steadfastness of resolve, and strength of will for the courage and the humility which they possessed. We must also remember that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Today, we're grateful to all Americans who do their part to live by those ideals, including our brave men and women in uniform overseas and their families, who sacrifice so much to keep America safe. To our service members who are away from home, we say an extra prayer for you and your loved ones, and we renew our commitment to take care of you as well as you've taken care of us. We're grateful to the countless Americans who serve their communities in soup kitchens and shelters, looking out for those who are less fortunate and lifting up those who've fallen on hard times. This generosity, this compassion, this belief that we are each other's keepers is essential to who we are, not just on this day, but every day. You know, it's easy to focus on what separates us, but as we gather with loved ones on this Thanksgiving, let's remember and be grateful 
for what binds us together. Our love of country, our commitment to justice and equality, our belief that America's best days are ahead and that her destiny is ours to shape, and that our inherited ideals must be the birthright of all of our children. That's what today is all about, that out of many, we are one. So thank you, God bless you, and from my family to yours, happy Thanksgiving. Cannibalism is okay as long as you're not actually hurting somebody. Wouldn't eating someone hurt them? I'm trying to do the best I can. There's only one way to have your sins forgiven. As born-again Christians, part of our duty is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or have never witnessed before, Witness Radio has something for you. Tune in next time to strengthen your faith and learn how to defend it. Go to witnesstalkradio.org. That's witnesstalkradio.org. If you want to grow in your understanding of God's Word and learn to study the Bible for yourself, join Pastor Andrew Rappaport as he teaches each week from the Word of God. The teaching is free through the Internet, but paid students receive a syllabus for each course with extra study materials. The cost is only $50 per year with special pricing for church groups. And you get to choose from the School of Biblical Hermeneutics or the School of Systematic Theology. Sign up today for Striving for Eternity Academy. Details at strivingforeternity.org. You're listening to Witness Radio. I want to remind you that Thanksgiving is an excellent time to share the gospel with others. Perhaps you're visiting with family for a meal. Share with them about how thankful you are that God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5.8. There's also a cornucopia, get it, of outreach possibilities like parades, Black Friday lines, or tree lighting ceremonies. In fact, I'll be in downtown Cincinnati on Friday to share the gospel with those attending the Light Up the Square event. Feel free to join me or plan your own evangelistic endeavor as an offering of thanksgiving to God. How can a Christian family include and emphasize God in their celebration of the Thanksgiving holiday? Well, you know, I think we forget that Thanksgiving was instituted by pilgrims who came to America, and the only purpose that Thanksgiving had was to thank God. I mean, they came here for religious freedom. They came here to avoid persecution and death in England. They came here to worship God, uh, to worship Christ, the way they believed the Bible said he was to be worshipped. And when they were protected and preserved, and when they found a a country in which they could establish their lives as hard as it was, uh, they found some measure of peace with the natives that were here, they they found a place where they could grow food and raise their families. All their thanks went to God. They didn't thank anyone but Him. And so thanksgiving came into being because they were thankful to God. The world obviously has changed. The United States has changed dramatically. Now we have Thanksgiving Day, and there's a kind of an ambiguous thanks. Yo, I'm thankful for what I have, blah, 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 but... It is rarely attached to God, as if God was the source of everything. Well, the fact is, He is. We don't have anything that we didn't receive from Him. It is God who's given us the power to get wealth. It is in Him we live and move and have our being. All good gifts and perfect gifts come down from Him. And there really is nowhere to place your thanks for all that you have unless it's placed in God. Thanksgiving Day just stops the world for a period and allows us to sit and contemplate and rejoice and offer our gratitude to Him. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Revelation 7.12 I am so thankful for those that listen to this show. Listeners like Ed who shares almost every episode, or Mercy who listens to the show while crumbing in China, or even listeners that criticize the show because your feedback, good or bad, helps me to improve. I thank God for you all. And until next time, the fields are ripe for the harvest. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and share the gospel. May God bless you.
Witness Radio has been brought to you by the Muniac family.